a little story about, uh, you know, when you're out with sort of mates that aren't really your kind of your best mates, as it were, and you get set up, and you don't really want to be set up. And this is how it goes. So this is a story about one of those nightmare setups with someone you don't really fancy and they're still trying to get their leg up. As I was out with these workmates, they're not the world's worst mates, but we only tend to stay friends in the workplace. Now this was like worst case scenario. I wanted to curtail it before I made a tip myself, but they were like, nah, you can't go. They confessed, they wanted to set me up with this one girl who works in marketing. Me asking this chick who was sinking six wickets hanging half ass out of her jeans, I'm thinking, pass please. <laughs> her plastered mate says, what, you think you're all that? Bastard couldn't get pussy if he bought a cat. <laughs> really? <laughs> this was her idea, I didn't get the hostility. She wanted to get me head and now I followed her to the guillotine. I said, look, she's not into me, she's got pissed and jittery to jump upon the first prick to hit the fizz and whiskey. Luckily I was second, and I reckon she's one of those nutters where I wake up and she's tattooing her name in my neck with a compass. <laughs> but that's the problem with a load of hammered mates. Always on a constant bloody need to match mate. They'll be like, oh look at them kissing. It's like, I was so fulfilling, and if that bastard ever hurts her, I'll fucking kill him. <laughs> Look, you had your heart set, but I didn't. For a start, I'm too nice to know what being nice isn't. She sidled up saying, hello, I really like you, what do you think about spending the night back up in my room? I said, <laughs> I'm moved. <laughs> uh, flattered, even. Uh, but actually, I'm, um, I'm, uh, I'm gay. I've got, I've got a man named uh, Steve. <laughs> good excuse? She said, now, nah, fuck off, I've seen you with girls, you fucking pulled some. I said I was a gay love, I didn't say I was a good one. <laughs> and that should have done, but now I'm clinging at straws. I said, fine, I'm not gay, but I'm in a stinging divorce. And it hurts so much, I can't see women anymore, so yes, you really are kind of being ignored. But she was so dead set on pushing for the door, and this wasn't going down well, which was kind of what I was looking for. <laughs> I said, look, it's more your, you know, you're too good, yeah, you're, you know, you're in another crowd. And I'm like this 30-year-old smack addict video gamer that's still living in his mother's house. It's not true. <laughs> smack usually tends to make a rash come out. <laughs> anyway, she said, look, when has a bloke ever turned it down? When it was sitting on a plate looking golden brown? Oh, God. I said, look, that's... It's kind of a, more of an orange hue, and if it's been sitting on a plate, then it's been sitting there a few. <laughs> Look, you seem nice, and you're not bad looking, and this is just the kind of awkward situation that we're put in. It's like 44 Kahluas and some water coolers later will be the former formal form of this office's boredom's entertainment. Look, I never wanted to be made the bastard. I'm drunk. You're the one who's taking advantage. And now I'm sat in a certain circle of girls drinking Bacardi and we're planning out the motions for the Christmas party. I'm asking, we, you know, we can all be friends now, can't we? Hardly. I suggest you go get your car keys. Sharply. I said, nobody's driving, but you're driving me nuts and I'm resigning when Monday finally comes. Look, I never wanted to date you. I never wanted this icy scene. I never wanted to climb the dirty verge to come on Eileen. <laughs> anyway. Mike, I see over there, he, he likes you for definite. She goes, Mike, really? Do I look fucking desperate? <laughs>